What's going on, Cup Gangers? My name is Alejandro, September 28th, and let's talk about Carcio. Hit it! What do you mean it doesn't work like that? I want to start with the big story of the day, which is, of course, VW's whole mess, aka Dieselgate. For those of you who haven't been following the story, let me just talk about it a little bit and simplify the story, explain it to you, and then also touch on some points that uh, no one's really talking about now. So, what's the deal? Well, it turns out that VW has been lying for six years to everyone about how bad their turbo diesel cars are for the environment. And it's not just by a little bit, it's by a lot. How do they do that? They did that by installing defeat devices in all their cars that went to the US so they can pass all the emission process. Turns out that these devices were installed and made by VW engineers in the first place. So no surprise to anyone that VW was completely aware of the whole scandal from day one. They did that by installing a two-phase software. One that will alert the car whenever it was being tested for emissions and it would regulate the emissions and drop them tremendously. And the other mode would be every other day. So that means whenever you're driving your clean turbo diesel car around the city and telling everyone, oh, what a douchebag you are for driving a V10 or a V8 or a Hummer if everyone drives a Hummer these days. They were polluting more than those guys <laughs> without knowing. So those people must not feel very great about themselves right now and that's why VW is in a lot of heat. But why exactly did VW did that? What's the reason behind this whole mess? They did that to hide the fact that their cars were polluting 10 to 100 times more than the EPA allows. So the big deal here is that VW's known about this for six years and also the amount of cars that got involved in this, which is 11 million cars over a period of six years. That's, that's a lot. Because VW is such a big company and owns so many brands, the problem obviously trickling to the other brands. The biggest problem that VW is having right now is that they're facing $18 billion worth of fines. Billion. Whew, that's a big number. And that's not VW's worst problem. Their biggest problem is that they're going to have to take back those 11 million cars and actually fix them. This is where the story gets really interesting and no one's talking about it. The reason why these cars are polluting the air so bad, it's simple. It's because their cats are made out of a material, metal, called zeolite. And zeolite is not the right material. When it heats up, it releases more emissions. So, why do I care about what Volkswagen's going to do with that? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, troll. I haven't told you why. The reason why this is so interesting to me is because VW is going to have to recall those cars and fix them, right? So how are they going to fix those cars so fast? The immediate fix and the easiest one to go is to palladium, which is another metal. So if you're on the market of metals, you understand that palladium right now, it's going to go straight to the roof. VW already bought half a million ounces of palladium and there's not enough metal for them. What does that mean? Supply and demand. The only people buying palladium like that is VW. No one else is out there trying to buy that metal because did you even know it existed? So because of the demand and the supply, this thing is going to go straight through the roof. So that's your chance to make some money. Buy some palladium. Nice and simple. Another way to make money, thanks to VW's uh, bad luck, is by buying their shares. Not right now. I would wait a little bit more. As we all know, the CEO of VW has been let go of. And in his place, the CEO of Porsche stepped in, which was an absolute amazing hire for BW. If you know anything that Porsche has been doing over the past few years, aside from making the cars look the same, he is exactly what the brand needs. Also, if you want to make money in some other way that's not as complicated as buying something that's valuable and high on demand, just remember that BW stock is going straight to the shithole. <laughs> Investing in those later will be obviously very smart of you. Also remember, BW is huge, so for those who are worried about the company going out of business, that's never going to happen. Why did VW do this whole thing and got in this whole mess? That's another thing no one's talking about. And the reason why is simple. They wanted to save money. <laughs> they wanted to save anywhere between five and ten billion dollars. <laughs> yep, five to ten billion dollars. And with this whole disaster that VW is in right now, I want to jump into another VW story that's related to it, which is the new Bugatti Chiron. As we all know, Bugatti's done with the Veyron and they're moving on to their new model, which is the Chiron, which surprisingly is not just a name for my diarrhea medicine. I spoke to a couple friends of mine that got up close and really got to look at the car. And uh, here's what they have to say. Number one, what's the car gonna look like? Basically, we've all seen the car. You know that Chiron concept for the Gran Turismo game? Well, that's basically 90% of the car. Turns out that if you remove all those crazy ass spoilers, all the steady era that's in there, that's the car. There's a picture here that I found on Instagram, thanks to this dude that you are seeing on the screen, uh, with an actual render of the car without those. That's as close as it gets to it. Look-wise, huge improvements. The headlights look so badass, the back 
finally looks aggressive. He doesn't look like a ladybug anymore. The new car is also going to have active aero, which we all expected, really. Let's jump into the technical specs of the car, which is really what gets people excited here. The car is going to have four turbos, one medium, one small, and two large turbos. The reason why they're installing these different types of turbos is so they can kill turbo lag. So this car is going to launch faster than anything on Earth. The Chiron is actually going to be 50 kilos lighter than the Super Sport, which it's pretty good considering that the Super Sport is also lighter than the original Veyron. The car is going to run on 400 to 425 section tires, making it the biggest, baddest, fattest tire for a production car today on the market. And here's a few other things that you need to know about the car right now. It'll have 1500 horsepower. The cost of service and maintenance is only going to be 50% of what the Veyron cost. That's amazing considering how expensive those were. There will no longer be a convertible and a coupe version. They're both one. If you want the convertible without the roof, all you need to do is ask. The car is said to be 2.2 million euros right now, but we're thinking that they're going to add a couple things that they're going to say, oh, it's going to be base now and that's going to go up to 2.4 million euros. They're saying that they're going to make again 400 examples of the car, but they're not entirely sure. I'm sure based on demand, that number is going to change or stay the same. There's over 10 examples driving out right now in the world. And the reason why is because they really wanted to make this more of a driver's car rather than a big Bentley with a huge engine, which is the best description I could come up with for the old one. Only the new Chiron sounds pretty fucking cool. Would I buy it? I still don't know. And the reason why is the maintenance on those things scare the shit out of me. I wanted to jump in into the next segment, which was the girl of the day, blah, blah, blah. but we're not going to do that. I said, girls get publicity because they have nice boobs. So instead, I wanted to give a shout out, an Instagram shout out to one of the most underrated people on Instagram. He cracks me up. He makes me laugh with these dirty jokes every single time I post a picture. He comments on them. And this is my friend, Dirty Five Dirty Garage. He's awesome give him a follow look at his comments comment at him he's hysterical anyways that's my time guys thank you so much for watching cup bangers i really appreciate it have a good one and if you watch this full episode you get 900 penis points trust me save them because they're going to be worth a lot of money at some point like soon and i also wanted to say thank you so much to my friend mike from publish for the swag and i'll see you next time did that freeze frame there's no one working the camera either.